Hi, welcome back to another session of Paint This with Jerry Yarnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. I am so happy you could join me today. As promised, we're going to start a brand new painting. Uh, I, I love it when we start a painting. You know, artists are kind of like this. We get all excited about starting a painting, and then we get into it a little bit. We can't wait to finish it so we can go on to the next one. Well, that's kind of where I'm at on this one. And the thing that's interesting about what we're doing now is, you know, we're traveling around the country. We're trying to find subjects that we can capture in all 50 states. So all of you that live out there, in fact, anywhere out there, if you've got subjects that you haven't seen me paint yet on TV in the last 25 years, and you want me to paint something from your state, please feel free to send in your photographs, uh, cards, and your letters so we can kind of look at it. We put them in our reference file, and we look at them. Me and my staff look at them all the time. We're always studying them. And so we've been in a lot of places these last few months. And, you know, we've been in, well, in the south. We've been up north. We just, you know, now i found a spot that we haven't been to yet in a while. And it's an area that's really sort of a, an iconic area of the United States with an iconic subject, and that's the old covered bridges. Now, a few weeks ago, we did the old red barn, which we called the farmer's icon. This is called Standing Proud. This is an old covered bridge up in Pennsylvania, which is where the concentration of covered bridges are up in that area in Iowa, Pennsylvania, you know, all up in that area. Some beautiful places up there that have these bridges. Well, I happened to be up there one day on a research trip, and I found this bridge that I fell in love with, but I just could not get a picture of it for whatever reason. So I had to, to make a little sketch of it, and from memory, I'm trying to put this one together. However, I did get some photos of some other bridges. I want to show them to you just so we can kind of use them as sort of a guideline. I might remind you though, this is an acrylic painting. We're working on a 12 by 24 horizontal stretch canvas, but this happens to be one of those gallery wraps. I might mention that right quick. It's the inch and a half wide gallery wrap. I've coated it slightly with a little uh, dove gray. It's burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little white. I just like to have that nice uh, soft tint on there before I start on this one. And I made a light sketch of the building and the, and the landmass with my white charcoal pencil. Now, here's some photos I just want to show you. Some of the bridges I took up there. And you'll notice these bridges obviously are very long, most of them, based on the width of the stream or the river or the creek or whatever it is. And a lot of them have names on them. But you know, they're, just, they're not really you know, an exciting building other than the fact that now they're nostalgic and they're old and they've got a lot of character. I spoke to a, a person up there whose grandfather was a bridge builder. And they were telling me about all the labor that went into these things. These were incredibly laborsome. Because back then they didn't have matter and technology. So to bend wood, you know, they had to soak it in water and then bend it and clamp it and hold it. And it was just an amazing thing to listen to them. They always have these uh, entryways. And they always had some kind of foundation. Let's see if we can find one. See, like here's one here with the, and they always had these roads going up into them and they had fences next to them. Here's one that's got a waterfall coming underneath it. And it's just, see, here's a real high one up here that's spanning a, a, uh, this creek here or this river. These are amazing. Now here's, I can't see this too well, but on this one you can see there's a, a stone foundation. And that's what this one had that I'm going to do. They have these big open fronts and sometimes they had windows in them that followed the length of the, of the, the creek. Now here's an interesting one. Now, I don't know where this came from. This is not a photograph I took. This came out of a magazine or something. It's a little shorter one. But this, these are amazing structures. Here's one where you can see the inside looking out. I thought that was kind of an interesting concept and that tree was right there at the end of it. So these are some of the things that we're going to concentrate on. And I think I've got one in here that I'm going to use as sort of a guide in terms of the foundational work. So let's talk about the sketch here. and we'll, we'll discuss some of that a little bit later. And you may have your own photo of a, a cover bridge you want to use. But all I want to show you today is how to put it together. Now, again, we're going to have a rough sketch here of the basic layout of the building. Now, this is going to have some perspective in it because we want the angle coming back like this. It's kind of setting up on a little knoll. Here's the water down here. We have the archway. These had an arch, two arches. And these were stone, old cut stone foundation, old weathered wood along the side here in the front, old shake shingles. There were just a lot of trees and bushes and shrubs, an old gravel road right here, a lot of stone, uh, rock, uh, boulders, and any eroded banks along the edge here. 
And so, and then of course the road meanders on back into the distance. It's just a fascinating painting. So what we're going to try to do in today's session, in our next session, as our, we traditionally do, is just get it underpainted. So it takes a couple of weeks to do that, and many of you know that if you're new for the first time, you're going to be in for a treat because when you see this kind of painting develop, it's almost like those old Polaroid cameras where you would take the picture and pull the film out, and it would take a while to develop. That's kind of what these do. They look real messy and blurry, but on the last two or three sessions, man, this thing just starts to change. So what we're going to do is start off with a simple sky. In this painting, we don't want a lot of competition. We want to keep the sky real simple. So we're going to, I think I'm going to use a very pale, soft, light blue. I haven't done this in a long time. So let's take our number 10 bristle brush. Let's go down here with our gesso. And I'm using my traditional dirty palette, dirty water, dirty everything. See, I got a little bit of yellow in that. Yellow dirt. 